So do you remember when all you needed for a gaming CPU was an i5? That was back when games barely made use of 4 CPU cores and it just made a lot more sense to spare that budget for your GPU. I mean, we have climbed tremendously in terms of GPU power since then, but games are definitely becoming a bit more CPU intensive. So with Intel recently kind of finishing up their 12th gen lineup with the introduction of the i3s and the locked i5s, this raises the question again how much you should be spending on a gaming CPU. I mean, how many cores and threads do games these days actually take advantage of? Do more cores give you a smoother frame rate experience, for example, and is opting for something like an 8 core or 10 core CPU for gaming, is that considered future proofing? Is that something that you really need to think about? So to test this, I've paired a bunch of the new CPUs from Intel with one of the fastest GPUs today, the RTX 3080. At the bottom of the lineup, we have the new quad core i3 12100F, which despite only being $130, boasts eight total threads. Boosting up to 4.3 gigahertz this is our cheapest option of the list and only pulling about 60 to 90 watts at full load it pulls the least amount of power as well then bumping up to around 200 bucks is the i5 12400 for that extra money we're getting an additional two performance cpu cores a bit of extra cash and a 100 megahertz higher boost clock like the i3 though the cpu cores here are not overclockable but with six cores and 12 threads currently considered the sweet spot by many this is definitely one to keep an eye on now also an i5 but actually a very different CPU is the i5-12600K. The K denotes that this one is overclockable, but this one also packs 10 total CPU cores. The extra four cores over the i5-12400 are the lower power efficient cores though, so it'll be interesting to see how much of an impact they make for gaming, if any. Stepping up to the big stuff now though, we have the i7-12700K. At around $400, we're now packing 12 total CPU cores made up of eight performance cores and four efficient cores. At this point, beefy air coolers or liquid cooling would be recommended, with those performance cores now boosting up to 5 gigahertz. Here is the end game though, it's the i9-12900K. This is the fastest desktop processor that you can buy at the moment, beating both the Ryzen 5900X and 5950X in gaming and production workloads, although pulling a lot more power while doing so. And honestly that pretty much goes for the rest of Intel's 12th gen lineup as well. As much as I love AMD Ryzen 5000 and all of of the epic builds that I've done with those CPUs in the past, that ship has kind of sailed. They had a long and powerful reign. And so if you're asking what about AMD Ryzen, uh, Intel's 12th gen is pretty much just the way to go at the moment, both for gaming and production workloads. And speaking of production workloads, that's probably a really good place to start. So we all know that more cores and threads scale pretty much linearly in multi-threaded apps like Cinebench R23 and Blender. So some of these results should be no surprise to you. But a really interesting comparison here is between the i5-12400 and the i5-12600K. So they are both i5s, but remember the 12600K has an additional four efficient cores over the 12400, and despite being clocked lower, they do improve performance here by quite a bit. That carries on in V-Ray 2, where the 12600K has a 32% uplift over the 12400, again, despite them both being called i5s. As for the i3-12100F, multi-threaded performance here isn't terrible for a quad-core CPU at all. Where it's really impressive, though is where it comes to single threaded performance in Cinebench where it just beats all of AMD's Ryzen 5000 CPUs. So what does that mean when it comes to gaming performance? Well it means that in some games the i3 can keep up with the demands of most modern titles unless they're very CPU intensive. Doom Eternal is a great example of that, story based first person shooter, not very CPU intensive aside from the high frame rates and the $130 i3 is able to deliver performance that is indistinguishable versus the $600 i i9 12900K. CPU usage is a fair bit higher and the frame rate graph is a bit more variable, but overall it's still a really impressive performance. Of course though, on the flip side, there are games out there which are a lot more demanding on the CPU, whether that's down to being less optimized or incorporating a bit more AI into the game's code. Cyberpunk 2077 is a really good example of that, where the i3 is really close to touching 100% CPU utilization, and on average here is about 12.5% slower than the i5-12400. What's really good to see here though is that it still delivers a pretty smooth, stutter-free experience despite almost being completely maxed out. The comparison here between the two i5s is also pretty interesting where on average the 12600K is about
about 6% faster on average than the 12400. When we sub in the i7 and the i9 though, things don't seem to improve that much further. There's a bit of a gain here by bumping up to the i7, but the i9 isn't able to take it much further than that. The i9 is only slightly faster here when it comes to the lowest 1% of frame rate over the i7 12700K, but for the most part it's the i5 12600K that gets us most of the way there. So Cyberpunk is a bit of a hand selected game here to represent something that's a bit more CPU intensive, and so is Rainbow Six Siege running at 1080p with an RTX 3080. I mean at this point we're really pushing these CPUs as much as we can to see how many draw calls they can handle before becoming a bottleneck, so you're not going to notice the difference between 400 and 500 FPS here, but it's still a pretty interesting test. Here the i3 is still able to cope quite fine, no stuttering or hiccups whatsoever, and CPU usage also has a bit of headroom. Just as in Cyberpunk though, it's the 12600K which gets us most of the way there. When we sub in the i7 and the i9, the results are virtually identical between them, not really giving us much more performance. Jumping into F1 2021, which is typically referred to as a relatively CPU intensive game, but here the more affordable i3 and i5 are really proving themselves as strong options. At 1440p with a 3080 delivering over 200 FPS, they are neck and neck with the i9 12900K. Not only that, but CPU usage looks fine, proves that there is a bit of headroom here in the tank as well, and the i3 is no more stuttery than the i9. It's only when we drop the resolution down to 1080p that we can force a bottleneck for that i3, and at that point the higher core count, faster CPUs are able to stretch their legs a bit further. Death Stranding is a very similar case to that, this game can get heavily CPU bottlenecked if you select the right options and the right graphics and run it at lower resolutions, you'll honestly see scaling there all the way up to the 12900K. At more realistic resolutions and settings though, stuff that we'd actually be playing at, that's all the i3 really needs to catch its breath and deliver performance that's virtually equal to the i7 and the i9 here. So are the days back where all you need for gaming is an i5? Well, pretty much, uh, I would say i5 is definitely a really solid option, but even more competitive is the i3 at $130. I mean, sure, there are games out there where we can clearly illustrate a difference between these different tiers of CPUs, but for most games out there, there's just not a massive difference. And even when there is a difference, I'm talking hand-picked games, high frame rates, low settings, you know, to really force a CPU bottleneck, you'd be hard-pressed to buy anything more than an i5 12600K purely on a game focused PC. So i7, i9, not really worth it when it comes to building a gaming focused PC if you haven't you know, already maxed out the budget for your GPU. Of course, if you're already going with like a 3080, 3080 Ti, I can see why someone would also go with like a 12700K or a 12900K just because they're looking for components to upgrade. I kind of get that. But if you have not, you know, maxed out the budget for your GPU and you're looking at like an i7, then I would highly recommend taking a couple of steps back and looking at the i5s instead. I know that kind of sounds a bit absurd to some people, but man, these i5s are really, really quick. I would much rather go like i5-12400 paired with an RTX 3080 compared to say 12700K and a 3070 or a 3060Ti. Of course, I can highly recommend the i7 and the i9 CPUs for production workloads though, so if you're doing some editing, CPU encoding, rendering, and stuff like that, that is of course where those CPUs and those higher core counts do make sense. Now, the decision between the i3 and the i5s, that is a little bit more tricky, but this is how I would break it down. The 12600K is what I would recommend as your enthusiast CPU option, something that you'd go with if you're someone who plays at higher frame rates, if you have a 240Hz monitor, for example, and you play with lower quality settings. In that scenario, you're more likely to impose a CPU bottleneck, and so the 12600K will help help you overcome that. Do keep in mind though that the 12600K is at least $100 more expensive than the i5-12400. I say at least because you also need to factor in the slightly better cooling solution that you'll need for the 12600K, as well as if you plan to overclock it on a Z690 motherboard. And again, it comes back to the point of trying to maximize the budget for your GPU. If for example, by going with the i5-12400, you can save a bit of cash and then upgrade from a 3060 to a 3060Ti, then that would be the way to go instead of going for the 12 12600K. And then as for the i3-12100F, I mean, really, you can't make a stronger case for any CPU in Intel's current lineup. At $130 US, 
you are just getting insane performance here. And for those that are playing at higher resolutions, higher quality settings, or maybe pairing it with, you know, maybe not a crazy GPU, those are situations where you're not going to be CPU bottlenecked as much and the 12100F is a seriously good choice. Again, save that cash, put it towards a stronger GPU where you'll actually be making a big difference. So that pretty much wraps up everything that you need to know in a nutshell. I will have these CPUs linked down below and I really hope that this video helped you out. As always, a huge thanks for watching and I'll see you all in the next one.